Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Misty Hino with Misty Hino's Lego Robotics. Some of you have asked me for some help with this year's Submerged Innovative Project. Now, I'm not going to just come out and throw things at you guys like that. But what I want to do is see if I can direct or steer your team in a way where it's helpful for your team to figure out what this innovative project is going to be. So the first thing I would suggest is going through the list of suggested topics for your innovative project. Now, there's no way in the world that I would tackle all 11 things here on this list. What I would do is have your team sit down and don't even research anything. Just taking a look at some of the suggested topics, I would say have every team member select three things out of this list that really interest them without, again, any, any kind of research or any kind of just digging in, into it, just looking at the titles and going, I really like these three. And then come together as a team and be able to weed out the ones that they don't want until they can focus in on their target topic, the one that they all really are excited about. Because on this one here, you wanna start big and work your way smaller until you can get that one topic. And even these topics are too general. You're gonna to have to even go deeper into them. Like for instance, like the fishing. It's just way too wide of a topic. So if you do choose the illegal fishing, you're going to have to go even smaller and more directed towards a singular topic because a lot of these are just too general and too broad. And you're going to have to, under a microscope, see if you can focus in on something specific. So take again all these topics, choose two or three until your team can settle in on one. Once you guys have figured out what your target's going to be, your target topic for your innovative project, see if you can somehow create some type of prototype. The, the judges love to get their hands or be able to see what your team's vision is. So in the past, my teams have 3D printed things. They have made things that are visually appealing to the judges where they're able to just, again, capture, get a snapshot of what that object is that you're creating. And if it's an idea, see how far you can take this idea to where it's concrete and not just an idea that's floating out in the space. Give them something where it's just grounded and they're able to get a good idea rather than just some, you know, flippant idea where they're gonna ask you a ton of questions and that's where it starts to go, you know, south for your team. Okay, once you think your team has figured out the project and your solution, I would say definitely throw that solution out to as many people as possible. Definitely your experts in that field so they can give you some pros and cons about your topic. But throw that idea out to just general folks like family, uh, other parents, um, somebody, you know, that a teacher at your school, the more eyes you can get on this project, the more you're going to see things, different viewpoints where they're going to be able to go, I like this idea, but, and then you're able to get just this broader picture of your project and solution. There might be a blind spot that your team doesn't see that just somebody might be able to spot. For instance, like, how much is this item going to cost? You know, just that simple question. Judges like to ask that question because they want to know how realistic is this? And if it is, how much would this cost to actually implement? And so give this project to as many folks, have them feed you as many questions as they can. So when the judges ask you these questions, you're ready to answer them. Okay, so once you give this idea to the experts, get as much feedback as you can. Have the experts say, yeah, this is awesome, but tweak it in this direction. Another expert might say, tweak it again in this direction. I guess this topic would be cover all your bases. So when the experts give you their feedback, make sure you address all of their concerns so that way you can tell the judges yeah, the expert said this, and then we decided to tweak it and answer that question with this solution. So they're wanting you to ask the experts so that way you're able to take their questions 
and cover your bases and make sure that everything, every spot, every base is covered so that you can be experts on this solution. Okay, I've said this in videos before. When you're ready to present your project to the judges and you have your board ready with all of your information, I used to have my team put stars, colored stars next to each section and each person knew what color they were. So if they saw a green star next to experts, that person knew, ah, I'm the one in charge of speaking about who our experts were, what they said, and what our solution was. That way, every team member just knew when it was their turn. And our team just went from item to item to item. And so that way, they could definitely memorize what they were going to say, but also knew when it was their turn to speak. And I would say lastly, definitely have your experts in each part of the innovative project. That way, if a judge asks a question about something, you're not going to get this awkward silence. And then you're not going to get everybody raising their hand. You should get the expert in that field. Not saying that everybody should just say, hey, that's not my part. But to have an expert, like let's say we're talking about the cost of your product, definitely have that person ready going, I know what the cost is. So everybody kind of has a general feeling of when it would be their turn to answer a question rather than everybody looking around going, I don't know, you know, who that is is going to speak on that one. Already know who that person's going to be because you already had your assigned roles. Okay, guys, so I know this was a lot to bite off and chew. The Innovative Project is in itself a really complex situation. It's we couldn't figure out whether we were spending more time on this or the robot game. Um, but ultimately, your team is going to come together. And this is what I love about First Lego League is each person's going to have their role, kind of like they do the robot game, where you might have that person that is going to be really good on the research. Um, you're going to have that person that's really good on presenting and can speak well. Um, but Ultimately, that's what they want. The judges want each person to teach the other folks in your team kind of, you know, popcorn sharing where maybe this is not my expertise, but somebody teaches me and I can teach somebody else something else until collectively your whole team has more knowledge because everybody's sharing that information with each other. So have fun with this. It's meant to be fun, not meant to be, you know, grueling or you know, something where you're dreading it. And I know a lot of times um, public speaking is not something that first Lego League students are the greatest, but it, you know, they get better with practice and it's definitely setting them up for success in, you know, middle school, high school, and even college where they get that, you know, public speaking practice, eye contact, um, and just being able to answer questions because they prepared and because they just have that expertise, whereas before they didn't. So thank you again for those questions. I hope this was helpful and good luck to you, your teams, as you guys hit up the 2024 submerged season. I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I am out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.